Hello, drafting students. Uh, just wanting to update you on a couple of things. Uh, you should be working in your Tinkercad account, or sorry, your Tinkercad unit. Some of you might be through that and you're wanting to get going on uh, the SketchUp unit. So the first two units, 3D drawing, just a really brief introduction. And then after February, we'll look at the manual drafting and some of the actual terminology and concepts involved in drafting 10. Uh, so Tinkercad, I should update you. Uh, at the end of it, you're asked to create your own projects. These projects can be little toys or models or something like that. If you save them as an STL file, which I believe Tinkercad does, uh, we now are in the process of building a, a 3D printer here at Vanguard School, and we might be able to print those out for you. So keep in mind, uh, if you want to build a little tool that is something useful, like a little keychain or something like that, we might be able to print that out for you here in Vanguard. Once you're done your Tinkercad unit, uh, you can move on to SketchUp. Now, SketchUp is something that, uh, that there's a few different versions out there, I guess. There might be some older versions on some Windows-based computers in your school that may or may not work. You might have SketchUp at home. Uh, you may have even purchased a professional version of SketchUp. I'm not sure, but it was a 3D drawing program originally designed by Google, I believe, and then now it was, it was sold to a, a different company. Um, but there's also a free online version that uh, seems to work okay. So we can maybe introduce you uh, to SketchUp by using the, the free version. One of the issues, though, is that a lot of my assignments and the videos reference the older version of SketchUp, but I think you'll be okay because some of the icons and, and uh, some of the basic aspects of SketchUp are kind of the same. So I have a link here in Drafting 1.1 uh, where you can access SketchUp. Now, if you click on that, it's always going to go to this little red flashing box, which is just the SketchUp uh, icon, I guess. Now, that did take a while to load. It probably ended up uh, taking about 25, 30 seconds to load. Uh, you didn't see that because I just paused the video. But this is your classic SketchUp view uh, in all versions of SketchUp. You have a person standing here at the intersection of a bunch of lines. It's a 3D plane, so we have uh, length, we have width, and we have up and we have down. So you can actually see... Uh, uh, in three dimensions in, in SketchUp. Um, one thing when you come to this, you, you might not be logged in. So it's easy to log in and create a, an account. Now, if you click on those three bars, uh, it's going to say, it's going to say sign into all things SketchUp. I don't even know if you have to create an account. I think you can do, it says create a new Trimble ID. And Trimble is that company that bought SketchUp. Or you can just sign in with your Google account and that should work just fine. And it'll ask you to uh, choose which Google account. Some of you have several Google accounts, but the one that says at Chinook SD uh, works, and it is your school Google account. So now I'm signed in. It takes you to this page, and you can actually go to a new model. And whenever you're building something in uh, SketchUp for this class, uh, use the template where it says feet and inches. Because we're going to be using an architectural scale, uh, down the road. Uh, feet and inches is what we're, we're going to be using. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this will come up as feet and inches, and then I'm just going to orient you to a couple of things around SketchUp. Okay, so you have your drawing plane. You have toolbars in the free version. You have on your left side and you have on your right side. The left-hand side are your actual working tools. The right-hand side is more to do with the settings of your drawing. The other part of the uh, screen that you'll use a lot is this measurement box down in the right hand corner. So I'll take you through your your uh, tool or utilities menu, your tool menu. In previous versions of SketchUp and the paid versions, I believe you have a massive toolbar up at the top here. Um, and that's uh, that's okay if you're using that. If not, you'll just have the uh, a few tools that you'll be able to, to use here. Number one is your pointer or select tool. Every time that you do something in SketchUp, you have to go back to this in order to be able to switch tools because SketchUp will always uh, leave you with the last tool that you were on. So, for instance, if I take the pencil tool, you know, and I do a bunch of stuff here and draw lines and everything else, uh, the pencil tool follows me all over the place. Okay, I can't get rid of it. So what I have to do is I have to go back. My eraser tool, okay, obviously allows me to erase what I did and so on. The other thing is if I drew a bunch of lines, let's say this one, okay, see it doesn't go away. i got to go in the select tool. If I collect the select tool and drag it, it'll highlight it. You can see it turn blue, and then I can hit delete, and I can erase that way as well. 
So that's select, that's eraser. This is your fill button, so you're, you're familiar with that. Notice how the fill button auto, automatically brings up a whole bunch of other stuff like materials and everything like that. So if you're building a shed, you can not only color it, but you can dip, put different kinds of materials on it too. Uh, okay, we talked about the pencil tool. The pencil tool allows you to be able to draw straight lines with the pencil tool. It allows you to draw freehand squiggly lines with the freehand tool. You have the arc tool. This arc tool allows you to draw various arcs. And what you'll be using a lot is your two-point arc, maybe your three-point arc. Okay. Your polygon tool. <clears throat> now, one thing, they've combined the circle tool with the polygon tool. So the polygons, uh, you can draw your square, squares and rectangles. You can draw rectangles with uh, the rounded off rotated corners. You can draw circles. You can do, draw different polygons with different sides other than just four. And then you can draw 3D text. Uh, this is your push and pull tool. And you'll use that quite a bit in order to be able to, let's say, draw a square and then be able to expand that into a 3D box. Okay, uh, this would be my, my move tool. So let's say I click that and I want it to move my guy here. I can actually move him wherever I need to. And then I have to click that to get away from it. Otherwise, it'll be keep on going. And this is the rotate tool. So I can click on my guy here and that kind of gives me a, an orientation or that gives me a pivot point and then I can actually tip my guy over if I want okay anything like that all right these are my measurement tools there's a tape measure this is a dimensioning tool a section plane my protractor and axes so let's say I draw a square okay or a rectangle in this case, and then I use my push-pull tool to make it into a box. I can actually measure with my tape measure. So I didn't pay attention to what dimensions I did, so I can actually click on this point. I can click on here. I'm going to do that again. And then you can see down in your dimensions or in your length, you can see that that was actually three feet six and three sixteenths of an inch is what that is okay um, so that's measurement later on when we're dimensioning it or when we're putting dimensions in okay I can actually click on that pull it away and see how it gives me a dimension that's going to be really useful because then we can actually dimension our objects later on Okay, the last, uh, last couple of tools that we'll take a look at is right down here. Uh, this is the Orbit tool. So the Orbit tool allows you to be able to really view everything in a 3D way. So you can actually look underneath, you can look on top of your drawing and so on. And the other one is the Pan tool. So the Pan tool, sometimes, sometimes it gets off to the right and you want to bring it back so you can actually grab your drawing and center it for, for you as well. So there's a couple of things in SketchUp. That... Okay, so uh, last thing would be just to save it as well. So you notice I've saved this messing around. If I want to save it uh, something else, I can call it uh, Testing 3 or something like that. Because I have a couple of other ones. And then uh, the key thing here is that if I want to hand this in, I can just go to my file folder and then I can download this as either a skip file, which is a, a Google file, or sorry, a SketchUp file, not Google. I keep thinking of this as Google, but SketchUp file. And then that SketchUp file can be sent to me through Moodle and I should be able to read it. An STL file is something that uh, you can actually print with a 3D printer. So if you're looking to build something in SketchUp and print it, we can do that. And then easiest for handing in, though, would be this PNG file. So once you're done your SketchUp model, and later down the road I ask you to do a cabin and so on, a PNG file is uh, easy to send a picture of to me. If I want to measure dimensions, you have to keep it in the, the uh, SketchUp file, though, and then I can use the tools to, to verify. So that would be one way of saving it or printing it out or anything that you want. And that's about it.